This episode is sponsored by Platinum Chauffeur Services. They're a chauffeur service based in Belfast, who you can find on Facebook and Instagram. And if you check out my own social media pages, you should be able to find a link. They should also have a website, which will be live in a few weeks' time. You can get in contact with them from anything from airport transfers, sporting events, nights out, Christmas parties, etc. coming up this time of year, weddings, and any corporate and business work. Thanks very much to Platinum Chauffeur Services for your support of the podcast. I'm here with Cumber Rack Manager, Gareth McKeown. Gareth, how are you, mate? You all good? All good. Yes, Gary, all good, mate. Um, I'm sure you're excited, nervous, or what's the feelings leading into the semi-final this week? No, well, we've, we've, we've prepared well. We've grown after playing Green Island in the, the quarterfinal of the, the Border Cup, which yeah. is it's not always nice back-to-back, you know. Uh, I, I don't like it personally playing a team back to back because they, they get to know what you're about and we get to know what they're about and it's hard to overcome sometimes what, what each team can do but I mean we're looking forward to it it's a massive thing for Cumberrack you know the, yeah. the last time we were well Cumberrack actually won it in 1991 right. um, which was a long time ago you know but to be in this position from, from what we have came to a Cumberrack where they were down in one A. Um we've we've brought the club a long, long way. You know, we've brought them out of one A into the Premier. Um now we're 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 in semi finals, quarter finals, which is what we wanted to do, you know. Yeah. Am I right in saying it's your third season then? So you come in and straight away brought the team into one A or Yeah, well we, we started in one A. Or sorry, from um, Premier Sorry. Yeah, we started in 1A uh, and then the COVID kicked in. One yeah. season was sort of abolished. This is our, I think this is our fourth season. Our third third full season of Cumberrack. Uh, yeah. And to be honest, it, it's the club is going, it's not just the team. It, the, the whole club is moving in the same direction. You know, we're, we're, yeah. we're, 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 the place is buzzing at the moment. See, I remember going down a couple of times myself and, Cumber were in one A and it always felt like a sleeping giant. Like everything was there for the club to be a Premier Division team. They should have always been a, a Premier team. But now that you have gotten the the Premier, and then I'm sure last season you were probably thinking, go in and see how we got on. But you actually finished was it third in the league overall, which is some achievement your first year back. And then what you are achieving this year, you have really brought the club to where it should be, really. Yeah, no, I, I, I have to agree with you because see, to be honest, we have we we've Kept the same squad of players. There, there's been no real well added a couple of away additions here and there, but what we needed, you know, um, the big man up front, Brett Conville. I want to get a mention to because he's been immense. He's came from from nothing yeah. to our team, and he's just grown from strength to strength. And we've got uh, we've got numerous players there, uh, which I'll probably name later on in the interview. And yeah, so the the. We're we're now moving in the right direction where we want to be. We applied for to go up again, you know. So we just have to wait and see what happens. Yeah, and then th- this season, what was your aims coming into the season? Was it just attack all fronts, or was it cups, or was it league, or? Well, well, see to be honest, when we first came to the club, me and Mark, um, it was sort of right. We know what we've got here. We'll do our best, see what we can do. But we knew there was a spark somewhere to be lit. And yeah. it was only a matter of time before we kicked on. And now we've, we've got the players on our side, committees on our side. The whole thing is moving in the right direction. And to be honest, it's one that you're going into a game thinking, who who is going to beat us? Yeah. You know, and that's 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 a God's honest truth. Yeah, we have to have that confidence to compete with the best. Like you look at the teams that have been successful in the Premier over the last couple of years, Crum and Star have been a mainstay. Rough Raylan were successful now, they've moved on. But it's almost mm-hmm. like who's gonna step up now, really, when it comes to the amateur league teams in the Premier, doesn't it? Oh, a hundred percent, yeah. And and as you said earlier, there, it's Cumberrack has been a Stephen giant for a lot a long time. Yeah. And it's now time where we I take it to the next level. We're we're now in semi finals, quarter finals, semi finals, and hoping obviously if we're in the semi final tomorrow night against a good Green Island side. We we'll played them in Saturday in the quarter final of the Border Cup, yeah. beat them two one, but that was not easy. It wasn't yeah. easy, and tomorrow night is not going to be easy either. I have to give Green Island the respect. They're a good side, organised, but I think we can overcome it and get into the final. 
Yeah, you have to have that confidence, and that's it, really. Like, and then when it comes to the semi final draw, I'm sure beforehand, realistically, without sounding disrespectful to Green Island, that would have been the draw that, that everybody wanted. But as you said, you played them on Saturday. It was obviously a tight game. You know that they're a good side and they're not to be taken lightly. No, I totally agree. And I, I spoke to the manager afterwards and, and I said, I give him the utmost respect because not only on the pitch, but off the pitch, the, the, they were real gentlemen. And, and to be fair, it could have went either way on Saturday. We, yeah. we, we were on top. First half, they could have went two up. We we ended up coming in uh one nil throughout the second half. I got a wee bit of a rally gun at half time. Uh, and we come out, got a quick one early in the second half, and then we went on obviously uh, to, to come in two one. Do you think it, within your squad do you, do you have you a good blend of experience and youth for boys' experience? Because these semi final nights, especially, sometimes players are just stuck in the headlights and don't turn up. Do you think you've got good blend of experience and youth that boys are are going to turn up on the night, or? Well, I, I hope I hope so because looking through our squad and team, who the squad I've picked for tomorrow night, the, the it is very uh, young, yeah. in a way, 23, 24 year olds. We have only like two or three 30 year olds, you know, if yeah. even that, and one of them's on the bench, you know, and it's difficult to go into a match where you don't have people who played in semi finals. And have that experience behind them, you know. But I feel the way we have we have approached it, we've done everything right. It's only a matter of sort of coming into it and the best team in the night wins it, you know. Yeah, because that's the thing about semi finals. It's not the best team overall. It's the team oh. that turns up on the night, which is the main thing, isn't it? Big team, mate. Big team. And see, to be honest, it it's as I say about Saturday, it could have went the other way at one stage. Yeah. Um, we sort of had a chat at half time and against Green Island and Saturday and you sort of go, what do we do here? But 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 we changed a couple of wee niggly things and it ended up working for us and we come out in the yeah. second half and turned it on, you know. And I hope I hope I just hope that people don't our players don't freeze tomorrow night, you know, because yeah. it can't happen and there'll be a good crowd there. Yeah. Have you had any injuries or suspensions or not well. We'll have a suspension. Our captain, Simon Hanna, was a top top player, captain at Chaffee Wednesday, yeah. and he won't go anywhere else. Our sleep clubs torture him, torture him to play for him, and because he's a works for the Royal Mail, he uh he 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 can't commit because he obviously works late on a Saturday. Yeah, I I do allow it because he could turn up at quarter to, quarter to two and he'll play. Do you know? So because he's that good, do you know, and that's the yeah. uh, honest truth but he's the only worry we'll have well not worry that's a fact that he's out of the, out of the game in the morning yeah and, and then when it comes to uh when it comes to the league now so you have the league you've only played two games is that yeah. a worry that you have such a, a catch-up because you've been doing so well in the cups or well yeah i totally agree yeah um because we will be squeezed in here probably playing tuesday thursday saturday yeah. Weekend, we put here for maybe four or five weeks, and it can get difficult with injuries and suspensions and whatever else. But at the minute, we're we're pretty happy. We played two games. We're we're no further down the table than we want to be, even after the two games, yeah. two two games, two wins. And it's a matter of we'll just take what's in front of us, you know, and yeah. and then move on, you know. Well, that's but, it. You can't uh, complain if you're successful. <laughs> If you're successful and doing well in the Cups, you can't complain. So, 100%. And I used to look at, when I when we were in 1A, I used to look at teams going, that they've already played a game in, in the league. But yeah. then all of a sudden, the games just tick off and they're taking the points off. And yeah. then you see them just climb the table, you know. And I hope that's what we can do. In the Border Cup, who is it? you playing a semi-final in the Border Cup? Crumb and Star. Crumb and Star. Star. Tough game. Tough game. Tough game, a really tough game. We haven't met them as this year yet. Um, yeah. I feel from the last time they played them as we have moved on big time. Um, I actually watched uh big Paul Trainer. Uh, big is it Paul Trainer? Yeah, big two, yeah, big Paul, two, yeah. yeah. Jam on uh, until you get beside him on the side of, Clint <laughs> <laughs> and then he becomes evil. But I'm the same. Yeah. But a, a real nice guy. Um, but that will be a. a 
a, a good test for both teams because I'm sure they know how well we're doing and they're obviously doing very well to themselves. Yeah, it's funny because the, the Border Cup's usually what Boxing Day, isn't it? And it's oh, on Christmas Day. So there's a possibility the Border Cup's going to have to be moved if either of you get into both finals. Or... Well, I we've already looked at that uh, in our own head, although I don't want to be looking too far ahead. But yeah, I'll get it through this here tomorrow night. Um, but Yes, Crumlin Star is always on our sights and they're always a good side in this amateur league and they prefer, I think, they should move on to higher and bigger things because they're very good. Yeah, no, they, and then they have that experience behind them as well and when it comes to big cup semi-finals and finals. So, obviously, in both competitions, they're the team who would be the favourites, you'd imagine. And, yeah, but, 100%. Like we said earlier, it doesn't matter if you're playing a semi-final or if you're getting to a final in either competition, it's still whoever turns up on the day. Yeah, no, big time. Um, and see, to be honest, see, it's it's a unforgiving rule. When you play the better teams, you tend to lift lift your game, and that's 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 just a fact. Uh, yeah. And any team should say that because that that's just the way it is. And to be honest, we know how good Crum and Star are. We've we've had the had them watched, and I will have them watched on Monday night as well. If we yeah. get this, even though no matter what happens. Because we need to be prepared. still have to play them again. Yeah. Well, that's like we need to be prepared to face them, you know. Yeah, we well, mentioned earlier about the amateur league and, and the strength of player. Like, like I know you said about Simon Hunt earlier. I, I haven't seen him play myself, but I've heard a lot about him this season, especially. Yeah. And uh, the level of the amateur league that to have eight teams in the quarterfinals of the amateur league, obviously now four in the semi final, just goes to show how strong the league is overall, isn't it? It's 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 scary. It really is. See, to be honest, we 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 played Green Island just last Saturday, um, and see the players they have, and they're one B. I personally don't think they should be a one B. They're they're top top side, really organised, play great football, and that's what I'm worried about about tomorrow night. But across the league, it's it's phenomenal the way the way the teams have progressed and. The, how more professional they've came, yeah. even the sides and the, the physios and the, the physical trainers and all this carry on to have with them. You know, it's a it's a credit to all the clubs. Yeah, Green Air in particular, they're, they're almost like St. Oliver Plunkett who got to the final intermediate cup last year. They've come up to the junior ranks, but their own youth setups are so strong that they, now that they're in that intermediate level, they're able to bring these kids in through their youth setups who've probably played the same way throughout. And then it just means then when they get there, they're just kind of. Green Island through and through or whatever, like one hundred percent, yeah, and and even like just on that, uh, uh, I see they've put on like the first hundred kids in, they get a hundred flags and all that. No, they get a flag each, and yeah, that just that brings the kids on board, you know. Yeah, and that's the like Johnny Evans and Corey Evans apparently are involved with down there and fair play because of the 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 brought the professionalism to the club, and I've been yeah. down there um a couple of years ago. Playing against them, and and they're the whole setup's phenomenal. Like it, it really is. Yeah. So we know they're going to bring a big crowd. Is there going to be a big crowd from the Cumber area? Do you think? I'm telling you, I I I think uh, Cumber will be empty tomorrow night. I really <laughs> do. There will nobody left in it. But even even at that, I've spoke to a load of people people, and see regarding like neutrals. There's yeah. a lot of neutrals there because there's a lot of people hate me and picky. Thanks. Regarding Crusaders and Lindsay, <laughs> uh, <laughs> our ex team, but it's it's one of them games you would enjoy it yeah. and take the panther and all the rest of it, you know. Either way, it's going to be some occasion, mate. So, look, I, I, I wish you the best of luck. No, thank you very much, guy. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's a massive occasion for yourselves in the club, and um, hopefully, then come Christmas Day, you're you're not going to be in the house Christmas morning. Well, this is it. No, no, well, this is mine and Mark Pickings. Sort of biggest game of management so far. Yeah. I know we won that one A, but we're lucky to win it. Um, but this year moving forward, to be in a semi final in the Suns Cup, which normally Linfield, Swifts, Cliftonville, and stuff yeah. are normally in for Cumberac, a wee town county down. You know, to be in that is a as a credit to the whole the whole club. You know, yeah. we have a term on Gary McKibben. He, the work he puts in is from it's unreal. It really yeah. is. Um, but to be in the semi final and hopefully progress into the final on Christmas morning will be a massive achievement. Hopefully Cumber's empty on Christmas morning as well, then. Well, it'll definitely be empty until about <laughs> two o'clock. 
two o'clock and then we're yeah. headed <laughs> Mate, thank you very much for coming on. Right, and I wish you the best of luck tomorrow night. Appreciate you, your time. Thank, thank you. Got him on. Thank you, mate. I'm here with Gareth McGuinness from Green Island. Gareth, how are you, mate? You all good? Yeah, not too bad, mate. How are you? I'm all good. Thanks very much for coming on. I really appreciate you giving up your time. No, not a baller. Not a baller at all. Uh, so, uh, I'd imagine it's a busy week in the club. Preparations for the club's first ever Stealing Sun semi-final. Um, how are you shaping up for us Friday night? Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. You're spot on there. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been a busy week for everybody. Um, all players, staff, everybody. Um, preparing as, as best as what we can and, and given given everything so far. Um, two good nights training, just finished. And uh, yeah, preparation's well underway. So in terms of the yeah, opposition, obviously you played them on Saturday and you, you obviously know a bit about them now. They probably know a bit about you now as well. Um, so what do you feel about the game or is there much from last Saturday you can even take from it leading into tomorrow night's game? Yeah, I suppose there's there's two ways you can look at it. You know, it, it depends what way what way you see it, obviously. You know, you get a look at Cumber, Cumber get a look at ourselves. You know, there's every people know um bits and pieces and a bit more about each other. Um but no, I'm I'm more than confident that um the work that the uh that the boys have put in all week and all season will get the result that that uh, that they deserve. And um yeah, more more than more than confident. That uh, yeah. that we can we can hopefully rectify Saturday. I'm sure being being the only one B team left in the competition, uh, and the start of the season, I'm sure nobody would have thought Grenada would have made a semi final of Stealing Suns. But you are obviously the underdogs, considering Cumber are the Premier Division team, and you're the underdogs out of the, the the last four in the competition. But you've been that way the whole way through the competition. So does that phase you in any way, or no? Honestly, we're just taking uh, throughout the season and then Stealing Suns, you know, just taking each game as it comes. You can only, you know, you can only play who you've got that week and who you've got in the next match. And we're focused and ready for it. You know, we're we're just focused on ourselves. We'll do what we know we can do and put out as, as everybody will wear their their heart on the sleeve and and hopefully you can hopefully it's gonna turn out the way the way we want it to. Yeah. Beating Bally McCash in earlier rounds, really one of your favourites. You've beaten Abbey Villa, and even in the Border Cup this year, you've beaten Ard Rangers. So you've played against these teams at higher level, so an opposition. So I'm sure you take confidence from that as well. No, absolutely. Even running back to last year, you know, we've always competed um, with with teams above us, and I think that this year we've definitely stepped it up a bit more and shown that not only can we compete, but you know, we have the ability and we have the the personnel there to, to go on and win these games. So yeah. I, th- I think it's just a matter of doing what we know we can. I know uh, you, you've been at Greenland obviously a long time because I remember playing against the uh, 2A uh, for well, go forward. Uh, so it's been a good few years anyway. You've been at Greenland, but the, the club itself is it's a huge club with a massive youth setup. And as the senior teams progress to move through the intermediate levels, I'm sure it's been easier to maintain players come from new setup players are coming through who've played for Green Island all their lives. Do, so does that help in terms of like it's almost like a real family club who's have always played together, been together a lot of players? No, absolutely. You know, having people coming up through the youth teams and playing the Green Island way and having the Green Island morals throughout, yeah. you know, as on their way up makes an absolute massive difference when it comes to stepping into the senior setup. And, you know, we have plenty of our under 18s and even as far down to some of the under 16s that are up training um, yeah. mixing in with the first, seconds on the development team. So they're more than integrated in the squad and I have no doubt that they'll come in to fulfil some key positions in the, in the seasons to come. Yeah, your season so far in general, obviously it's the first year in 1B, but it's only about played five games. So I know he's lost one yeah. game, was it? Yeah, but... You have a bit of catching up to do or also because yep. the Cups have obviously meant the league's been giving you a bit of a back seat, but I'm sure promotion in the league's a massive aim as well, is it? Yeah, of course. Pro- promotion in the league's always everybody's first everybody's first priority. Um come as I say, you know, taking each match as it comes Friday night's the priority. And cup matches over the last sort of I think it's been about about disregarding Barn uh, match there I think it was about six weeks in the trot we, uh, we were in cup matches um, 
but yeah, no, just taking each one as it comes and, you know, Friday night could end Stealing Sun's Cup run or, you know, we could have another match to focus on that, that's coming. But yeah, one match at a time and we'll yeah. take it off by there, hopefully, get us get us to where we need to be by the end of the season. There, there's two different ways to look at it. So if you're winning games, it's easier to carry that one and form in the league. And then if you're, yeah, you can people can say you take your focus off the league, but when you have big games like you used to, like semi final Stealing Suns, you're the quarter final at Border Cup on Saturday, everybody wants to be a part of that. So when it comes to the league games, they're playing for positions anyway, really, aren't they? Yeah, of course. That you know, that's that's always going to be the way there. Everybody, nobody wants to drop off, and you know, nobody thinks twice that it's maybe a late game or you know a quarter final instead of a semi final or whatever. Everybody wants to you know cement their place for these you know these big games, the semi finals and the quarter finals of cups. So no, everybody's been uh, all the boys and everybody's been putting in the work Tuesday, yeah. Thursday, and Saturdays as well. But before I get to asking you a question about any injuries and suspensions, I was talking to your gaffer. He was telling me that you're suspended yourself, which I'm sure it's a massive disappointment for you, but you're, I'm sure your fingers crossed that you have a, a final to look forward to at least playing. No, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's heartbreaking to say the least, you know, that you, you, you know, you get the semifinals and, you know, everything's drummed up about it and you don't, you know, you don't get the, the opportunity to even, you know, to, to play in it, but no, absolutely fingers, toes, everything crossed that, um, I've, I've more than more than confident in the boys that they will they will do the job and that there'll be a, a final for me to come back and hopefully fight my way into for a for a place in it. Yeah, and I know you've been like acting skipper. Is it Ryan Greer's been? Has he been injured? Is he yeah, still yeah. out long term or is he going to be coming back anytime soon? No, Ryan's Ryan's been back in now, so he has. Um, he played on Saturday there as well. So, uh, yeah, he's back. And and up and running, yeah. He's just aims in and out of the squad there, and was a big miss for us. So he was yeah. absolutely, but more than happy to have him back in. And um, no doubt that he'll he lead us to where where we need to go on Friday. Yeah, and one said it's great having him back with being the captain of the team, a real leader. But then I'm, I'm sure you yourself as well. The boys would be you're obviously vice captain of the club as well. So you missing the game is a big loss for the team. Yeah, look, it's as you know the the squad that we have and the depth that we have, as you know, saying, but you know, even the youth players, but you know, people come from yeah. you know twos dev team. There's there's absolutely you know there's an abundance of people that we can fill in and and swap in and out, and it's been a it's been a big part to how we've got here so yeah. far. So even though I am out myself and um I've got it, I'm I'm confident that that they'll whoever fills yeah. in for me on uh, on Friday night um. Well, well, hold the decision down and, and make it hard for me to get yeah. back in. See, see, I put you on the spot there because you had to give a very humble response there. I'd say it. I was <laughs> and I miss it. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, mate, see, in terms of the other like, players in the team, is there any injuries you're worried about? Anyone else suspended as well? Or, um, no other suspensions that I know of. Um, with a couple of injuries, um, knocking about, uh, Maddie Sinclair, who. Um, played a big part at the start of the season and a, and a major part last year as well. Um, has, has been carrying a bit of a knock. He's been out for uh, the last sort of month or so, yeah. um, and he's still out. So he's he's been he's been a big been a big miss since he's been out over the last month. Um, yeah. but no no other no other suspensions or injuries that that I'm aware of. Um, unless something happened tonight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in terms of uh the semi final itself, the. Do you have a, a good mix of experience and youth or you're quite a young say that you're you're obviously thinking that that experience can help for the players you have that, but then sometimes young players don't have any fear. How do you think the boys will will make the occasion? Because they are, it is an occasion and then sometimes the occasion gets too much for people. No, absolutely. And and you know what? Sometimes to say that you're you're not nervous isn't a good thing. A wee bit of nerves is always good. You know, it helps yeah. helps you focus and that sort of stuff. But you know, we were, were missing the likes of um, Dinger on yeah. Saturday there. And, you know, he brings the experience into the team. Yeah. So if, if he's a part of the squad come come Friday night and a part of the team, he'll be, you know, a major help to bring the bring that experience levels and help any of the younger guys that are playing. Um, yeah. you know, help them keep their calm and hopefully they can they can provide the the energy and the buzz about the place. Um yeah. that that will also sort of you know, drag everybody else with them. 
a dinger's enough experience for anybody, doesn't he? Like as well, <laughs> he's more experienced than everybody put together, hasn't yeah. he? <laughs> he, he, he? I've spoken to him a couple of years ago in the podcast. He told me he was retiring then, but I was, I think I was before COVID, so he's still going to be fair to him. Like he's done, he's had some career. <laughs> I think I retire before uh, before Dinger retires. <laughs> he's also like. It was years ago now, obviously, but back in the junior divisions. But he's also done very well in the junior cup. It was a junior cup final, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. Is there many boys yeah, from, yeah, a, wasn't from about the squad from then who that was obviously a massive occasion as well. You can draw on that experience leading mm. in the semi. Yeah, so like um obviously Dinger was there, and um, you had myself, uh Maddie Sinclair, who's who's out as well, but he yeah. was part of that squad. Uh Ryan Greer. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's you've got D Tumulty still about. Um he was playing on Saturday there in the in the border quarter final. Um, you know, there's there's still there's still a handful of there's still a, a, enough of us anyway that sort yeah. of came from that big occasion, um, that, that have the experience there that can at least, you know, even if everybody isn't a part of this squad um tomorrow night or isn't featuring, you know, they're at least around the club and around the training sessions to be able to give boys that bit of advice, you know, who maybe haven't played in there semi-finals or finals and that sort of stuff. Yeah, and it, without, I, say, I actually said the same thing to the cover manager, Gareth McComb, when I spoke to him, just without certain disrespectful, everyone looking at the semi-final draw would have been wanting Green Island based on the terms of the divisions of the league, but it, that, that obviously goes out the window when it comes to a semi-final, and, and you just said earlier, you're not really worried about that, but um, are you thinking that Cumber may sort of take it a wee bit lately, or do you think they'll still be completely focused on beating us, especially after beating us on Saturday? It's hard back to back, or no? I, I have absolutely no doubt the Cumber are going to come come out of the blocks absolutely flying and just wanting to say that you know we did it in the Border Cup, you know yeah. we'll do it in the, in the semi finals as well. You know they have no doubt that they want to want want to secure their you know their their stamp on on you know us coming through, um, but. As I say, you know, both teams got to look at each other on Saturday, and whether that's a good thing or, or a bad thing, yeah. you know, the work's been put in this week and it's been put in all season. And although on paper it may, you know, seem quite lopsided, I've, I've, you know, no doubt at all that that will, will, will give everything, give one hundred percent. And yeah. if we, I know if we do, boys do that, they'll, they'll, they'll get us where we need to, where we need to go by come Friday night end. Yeah, it takes a very foolish man really to look at paper when it comes to the semi final because it's all about just who turns up, really, isn't it? Of course, no, of course. Yeah, and then the, the amateur league itself is obviously thriving at the moment for semi finalists. Was he a quarter finalist in Stealing Sons? And then not only that, it's also when you look at the junior divisions in the amateur league, the fact that yourselves and Willowbank have come up through the league's last couple of years. People see 1C is not a tough league, but it took us a couple of years to get out of it. He's went out with Willow Bank last year, both quarter finalists this year. It just goes to show the strength throughout the whole amateur league, really, doesn't it? Yeah, I know, of course. Like there's there's so much it's it's so competitive, you know, in, in all leagues. You know, even like there's there's you're never going on a Saturday with an easy, you know, going, ah, you know what, you know, this isn't gonna to be too bad here, no matter who you're playing. Um, league, cup, everything. It's there's there's always Something, someone putting you know pressure on you somewhere. So it's, it's a uh, you know it's it's a it's not an easy an easy journey up up the, up the leagues and up the division through the cups. But we're we we're, we're progressing well, and you know yeah. I'm confident that you know hopefully this year, with the effort that we've been putting in and and all the all the effort that the clubs put in for us, we'll yeah. we'll hopefully do the business in the league as well. Long term as well, I'm sure the long term aim for the club is to get as high as the con in amateur league, and like it's a, it's a massive club. Green Island always has been, but it was always about the youth setup. But now you senior players are starting to lead the way, and then new players can follow, and then it's easier, like we said earlier, for players to stay within the club. Like I'm sure, like everyone's just on, everyone's going along in the same journey, really, and the aim is to get the Premier Division and beyond the hope. Yeah, no, of course. The, the aim is, is always to go, you know, as as high as what we can. And with the youth setup coming in, and then, you know, there's there's as I said, you know, there's under sixteen boys, you know, up to under eighteens who are training throughout the senior setup yeah. and fitting in, you know, more than well. So having them boys coming through at that young age just shows that we're 
what you know for the years to come when the likes of your your dingers eventually uh eventually pack it in um there you know there's going to be more than enough talent coming through the setup um and knowing the green island way and the senior the senior way you know yeah. they're going to come through and be be more than easy to fit in to, to the teams yeah i'm sure you are expecting a big crowd tomorrow night then hopefully a lot of people come from green island to deceive you to watch us oh yeah absolutely I've, I've no doubt that um that you know the whole club and and everybody you know from the area uh, will will be down you know we've, we've got our our uh our supporters here you know here you follow us every week and yeah. there you know there's no doubt that they'll come and, and a bit more and yeah. uh cumber as well i'm sure will bring a bring a bring a more than decent crowd down so it should be a good atmosphere around it yeah. and uh, uh should be a good, good night in general and hopefully a lot of empty homes in green island and christmas day then yeah absolutely that's that's the plan Dis- disrupt christmas day as much as what yeah. we can <laughs> you know uh co- couple of apologies going out to uh to, to wives and stuff i'm sure on uh <laughs> on if, if if that happens but uh no i'm sure i'm sure there'll be some of the boys will be forgiven to the to, to play in the, the state and sons cup final if it comes to it. well mate it, one last thing before i get to it because i think the suspension rules ridiculous i think it needs to be looked at uh i actually thought when it comes to semi-finals these things dropped off but to get was it two bookings has got you this stage that they get suspended is that it yeah but it's, 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 it's yeah so uh yeah, I'd I'd won in the won in the first round against uh yeah won the first round and then yeah. uh won against Abbey Villa, so yeah. okay it, you know what it's harsh but it, it happens and you yeah. know the the rules there so uh, yeah. I guess I guess the um I guess you, really you can only say it's down to myself you know don't get booked but. Uh, you know, it happens in what, football. What, what you can you do... really? What can you do about it? You know what I mean. You can't. Sometimes you can't do anything about it. Yeah, mate. Well, I wish us best of luck, and hopefully you have a final. Look forward to yourself come Christmas Day as well. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you very mate. much. Appreciate it. Thanks for giving up your time, and, and best of luck with Green Island tomorrow night. Y- yes, appreciate it. it. Was lovely speaking to you. Thank you very much.